So this right here is the Realme GT Neo 3T. I got it about a month back and since then I've been, you know, using this, using the Poco F4 and a few other phones. But last 15 days, my SIM card has been on this device. In fact, today the Poco F4 is gone. So we have both the SIM cards in there. And a couple of days back, I noticed that there was a September security patch update released for this device. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Hello everyone, my name is Kalash. You're watching Phone Ops. We make amazing tech content like this every single day. So please subscribe and share it with your friends and family. And today is the complete review of Realme GT Neo 3T's latest update, which is the September security patch. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. Let's get going. All right, now let's get the record straight. What are the changes you ask? The major change over here, of course, is the security patch, because as you can see, the first thing that is mentioned over here is updated Android security patch to September 2023. Now under system, they do have certain things that are mentioned. Now we have optimized system stability, improved user experience. That is a standard stuff all Chinese manufacturers have to say. I don't know about Samsung and Apple, but this is a very, very common line about all the other manufacturers, okay? Optimize power consumption in some scenarios to improve battery life experience. Now, this is what I'm going to talk to you about. Of course, we'll talk about the benchmark numbers and the gaming experience nonetheless, but let's get back to it. So the moment you go to the home screen, this is a typical Realme UI 4.0 update. There are no major changes. And if you ask me back of the head, well, this is not better than MI UI. In fact, I sometimes find Realme UI to be a little more stuttery and jittery compared to MI UI 14. Leaving that aside, if you ask me, usability changes, none. Smoothness changes, I've not experienced anything. This is just and just and just a security patch update. And apart from that, any changes like, do you get 90 FPS in BGMI? Unfortunately not. What about the camera application? Did you notice any changes to the camera menu or any changes to the picture quality? Unfortunately, I haven't. Even in the settings section over here, there are no major changes as far as the camera quality is concerned be it the front camera or the rear camera. Now the standard Google dialer, the standard Google messaging app is present. And if you go to settings over here, you will see that you still have all the standard stuff that was available earlier. It, to me, you know, always, it doesn't really make sense to repeat things again and again every month, wherein everything is absolutely the same. So let's get to the important part. Say, if we go to special features over here, you will not find anything important. But if you go to the battery section, you will notice that I've been using this as a personal phone like a normal person would. I've not really gone ahead and, you know, done the test of a typical YouTube video wherein I charge the phone completely keep the camera on no this is more of a real life scenario that you would experience the good thing here is that we have eq battery to our rescue so that will give us a complete pattern of what exactly is going on by the way if you care about battery life or charging speeds you should really use this app it's really really helpful now directly you know if you look over here battery usage 20 percent in two hours and 20 minutes in deep sleep for 37 minutes screen on is around one hour and four minutes and screen off is like one hour and 23 minutes so i've been you know connecting disconnecting charging discharging and stuff like that but as you can see over here most of my time is spent on either olx or google chrome sometimes you know while going to sleep i watch a movie on this phone because let's face it it does have a pretty decent display here full battery time estimates remember these are estimates so you get around six hours and 13 minutes of screen on time in my usage, I'll be honest with you guys, I never managed to get more than five hours. So has the battery life improved? No. Even if we look at the history, we've had like 43 sessions over here. Let's look at the last two days when the update was out. Okay. So 51 to 99%, it took one hour to charge to 50%. This was with the 33 watt charger. I did use the fast charger. Okay. And let's talk about battery drain over here, 70 to 55% one hour and 45 minutes okay so the battery life is good on this device because of course it comes with a 5000 milliamp hour cell and the charging speeds on the 80 watt charger are pretty good no complaints there what about the performance you ask for me the raw performance numbers don't matter that much well i'll show you the numbers but what matters is the ui and that is the reason i you know loved the nothing phone one because the os is beautiful and amazing Another thing on a sideline over here, the custom ROMs for this device are good, but they're not great. 
something like a poco x3 pro has splendid custom rom support and amazing custom rom stability we will we will try a few custom roms there are a couple of new devices coming as well and a lot of other things are happening when the videos are regular you will come to know anyways what about the ui performance to me it is still a little disappointing i really hope with android 14 and with realme ui 5 they get this act together because smoothness is something that really matters to me 120 hertz is not going to make any difference if it is not smooth okay now let's talk about bgmi for a second over here everybody has been going around this rumor there is 90 fps in this update 90 fps in that update it's simply not there this device doesn't officially have support for 90 fps bgmi it's very easy for me to go ahead and put a question mark with a bgmi thumbnail and make it a clickbait video but that's not how we work we have phone offs we give you precise information and we're not going to do any gameplay over here give this video a like and drop a comment if you want to see a dedicated gameplay video of this update for bgmi okay now as you can see we are on the main screen and let's say we go to settings and go to graphics and audio smooth extreme bam so you don't really have support for bgmi 90 fps over here but let me tell you this that should not disappoint you because this particular update or even the previous update on the gt neo 3t 90 fps may not be the case but 60 fps gaming is pretty good even if you are on you know a competitive match it can get the job done remember the snapdragon 870 is one of the best processors out there so gaming definitely yes it's a good thing that you can game on this for long hours and the fast charging really helps in such scenarios last but not the least let's actually talk about the benchmark number so first if we actually go to enter to benchmark over here you will see that i have enabled the game turbo or gt mode whatever you're going to call it and we get a good 8 lakh 40 609 that's a pretty decent score mind you we did increase the temperature by 7.2 degrees and the battery dropped by five percent one more thing to note over here we had to use the light version for the graphics test i don't know there's an antutu issue but yes with all those settings gt mode enabled the device was at 30 degrees celsius on the battery part i believe and that's when we got this score over three runs 840 850 is what i'm getting so this is a pretty stable score okay now let's actually go to google photos because we're going to look at the cpu throttle test all right now let's go to screenshots here and see this this is good, but for an 870 with GT mode, I would say my Mi 11X would do better. The Poco F4 would do better. So there is something going on with the consistent throttling on the GT Neo 3T. I don't know if it's the cooling or the optimization of the software. This is still a good score, mind you. It's not a bad score by any means. You're getting an average score of 213 GIPS. That is 213080 and a maximum score of 245484. That's a solid score. And the throttling is at 80%. So we are used to seeing the Mi 11Xs and the Poco F4s to no throttle at all or 90, 92%. That in my opinion is good. Now, last but not the least, we have Geekbench as well, right? So Geekbench numbers, again, are pretty good. A 1300 on single core would have been great, but we do have 1256 single core and 3023 multi-core. So all in all, performance is on point, gaming is on point, battery backup has not improved, but it has not worsened as well. Charging speeds are still the same. No new features at all in this update. I really hope that new features will be added in Realme UI 5 with Android 14, which this device is supposed to get. So all in all, if you ask me, should I update to this Kailash? Yes, you should. Should I try a custom ROM on the GT Neo 3T? You should definitely. A lot of y'all have requested to make custom ROM videos on this. I don't know how long I'm going to keep this device because the fan base is quite small. But yes, while I have it, I'm going to make some amazing videos for this. And this was the complete review of the latest update for the Realme GT Neo 3T. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. I'll see you in the next one. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.